We'll begin at the student's head. Come into a nice easy seat and then place one foot on each shoulder and gently press down away from the ears as you reach underneath the neck and pull gently with the, with the hands, the skull just lifting a little bit so you can lift and pull long, creating more space in the cervical spine and the neck. And then for a nice simple neck massage, reach underneath where the neck meets the shoulders. And with your fingers, just a nice little gentle pressure, little waves from the first finger pressing all the way through the fingers to the pinky fingers. And just give little waves up through the neck, not on the spine, but to the side of the neck spine. And do that a few times, just moving up and giving waves of length through the head and the neck. And then as you gently come up, you might try giving an ear massage. So with the thumbs, just press around the ear, draw the earlobes down. You can kind of slide the fingers behind the ears. Just rubbing anywhere around the ears is great for tension release. And you can press the ears in as if you're trying to plug both of their ears for a moment. Feels really good. And then perhaps up towards the temples. So the thumbs nice and easy circles in the temples right at the hairline. You can press your thumbs gently over the eyebrows one at a time or smooth the eyebrows or the flesh just above on the forehead out to the sides. Plant your thumbs perhaps at the center of the eyebrows right above the bridge of the nose. Press down gently to help calm the mind and stimulate the pituitary gland which is the regulator of the whole metabolism. So very cooling and calming point. Then you can gently then walk the fingertips up and slide up the forehead and begin to walk those fingertips through the hairline as well. So from this press of the forehead, you begin to walk, which helps to balance the two hemispheres of the brain. So thumbs pressing in. When you reach the crown of the head, press in gently to root the skull back into the neck. So a really nice crown point to help release and open a lot of mental tension and provide insight and creativity. Feels really good too. So after the head and neck, we're going to come and do a shoulder assist and reset. You can press the heel of your hand right into the place where the arm meets the body. So there's a little notch there. Just give a nice gentle press there and you can take two hands down. So none of this is too hard, but you are firm in your adjustments. And then maybe one arm down and then the other rocking gently from side to side. Helps to open the heart. And then to reset the shoulder blades onto the back and make a nice healthy arm and body alignment as they rest, you're going to lift one wrist. Squeeze it with the hand as if trying to pull and press that hand away from the wrist. So give nice gentle squeezes here. Lengthen the arm out a little bit more and place it to the side, palm up. Cross hands, placing one on top of the shoulder to lift it. As your other hand, right hand, slides underneath the shoulder blade. And as you pull the shoulder blade towards you with the other hand, gently press away in that same shoulder notch. And you can turn the bicep down a little bit. So just roll that bicep open. So the shoulder rests a little more. I'm just sliding my hand down there to help release. And a nice little hand massage here is great. So just use your thumbs to press into the flesh of the hand, the thumb pad, and pull each finger gently away from the hand to release any compression caused during these arm balances of yoga. And then we'll continue to the other side. My left hand is picking up her right hand now, squeezing in to give her a nice wrist reset. I'm going to lengthen that arm out. And then with my right hand, I'm picking up her left shoulder, and the left hand slides underneath. So I'm turning the shoulder blade down towards me as I roll that shoulder up towards her ear a little bit, towards the floor. So resetting so the shoulder blade is flat. And you can move the bicep rolling it open so the palm faces the ceiling more comfortably. And of course, that lovely little palm massage, great for any yogi and anyone if you type all day and use your hands. So if you're alive, you're gonna like this massage. Move the fingers wide and long away from the hand and then place them both down. 
and I'm going to place my palms just at the base of her rib cage. Have her inhale and on the exhale a gentle pressure down to remind her to relax that mid and upper back. Down to the feet now. Turn the toes towards center. Hang on underneath the heels at the ankles and pull up. And placing the heels in your own hip creases, just begin to rock from side to side. Keep hanging onto the legs. You can give a little pull there and a press to integrate. So I'm pulling the legs away and then integrating them into the body. And some circles here are nice too. This helps really relax our lower back and also release the psoas and iliopsoas. So we've got two muscles there that really say contracted during the practice. Helps to relax the low back. Place the feet down and just wave them from side to side, reminding them to release and relax the hips. Good. So I'm keeping one foot outside the shin now for stability, lifting the thigh, rolling it in and widening the thigh bone so that it gives a little space in the hips and pelvis. One foot outside that right shin now and I'm opening that hip crease by rolling the thigh internally and widening the thigh bone. And then right at the top of the leg where it meets the hip crease, I'm just giving her a little pressure from side to side and then running down the legs, a tiny little bit of length there. So last moment here, a nice foot massage. You want to come into this not strongly but confidently, so no tickling involved. And with my thumb, I'm just kind of reaching and pressing up the inner arches from the inner heel all the way up through the big toe mound and pulling the big toe away feels really nice. And then one point underneath the ball of the foot right at the center so directly in line underneath the second and third toes and then under the mound of the ball of the foot you can press in there and up and just hold with the thumbs. This is a Shakti point said to really relax the whole body. And then I just give her a little bit of length through the tops of the feet moving down pointing her feet a little bit, and then coming back up to sit with full intention. And when she's finished with her practice here, and when you're finished and ready for her to come up, you can say, now begin to deepen the breath here, and maybe wiggle the fingers and toes. Reach up overhead, take a full body stretch, inhale, and on the exhale, just draw the knees into the chest, so you can roll little circles into the back here. This is a great way to have any class come out of Shavasana. So little rocks from side to side or make circles with your hands into the knees. So dissolving any last bits of tension. And then the student rolls to one side and rests on the floor, deciding and aligning with the best in themselves. So as they come up to sit in easy seat, They've made new choices about how they want to come back into their day. Hands to the heart. <laughs> Namaste. Reaching the hands up to all those outer teachers and fists into the navel, bowing to the teacher within and all that inner strength. Hopefully you're nice and relaxed now. <laughs> nice yoga high five for that.